this item number two is public comments and what we do for public comments is we open up the public comment section for anyone who's uh, not listed on the agenda. This allows uh, people to come forward and bring up uh, issues that they want to talk about or bring to our attention or give us feedback on something that's going on in the town. So with that, I'll go ahead and open the uh, public comment section and I've got my special tool that I, all right. Uh, no one's here to talk on that, any other item. So we'll go ahead and close the public comment section on item two and then bring it back for the approval of minute, minutes item number three. Uh, I didn't see anything there that I felt was incorrectly uh, uh, put down. Any, any, uh, any uh, changes to it? No changes. No changes? I don't believe so. Not All right, good. You want to do a motion? Kathy, you want to do a motion? For what? For approval of minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Lanes? Yes. Commissioner Lerner? Yes. Commissioner Narnsick? Yes. Um, and if I may, I did see an additional phone number join the Zoom meeting. Commissioner Conse, is that you at the yes. 310 area code? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm in Los Angeles. Doesn't doesn't I'll seem like it. Yeah, commissioners have to be on on camera as as, as it. Yeah, as, yeah. As I just got it loaded. So, so let me just. I'll do it right now. That she'd have to show up the camera. All right. Yeah, I apologize. With, uh, with that, then we'll open the public hearing seg segment. And there are a few items on there. There's one then that's uh, going to be continued, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's start with a uh, with item number four A, the tree protection zone exception for one Norway in Atherton. The way let me go over the procedure that we'll use on all the items. The first thing we'll do is we'll hear an overview from staff, then questions from staff from uh, from the commission to the staff. Then I'll open up the public. Uh, hearing. We'll start with the applicant or the representative, then we'll close the public hearing. We'll bring it back for the uh, for the commission to uh, have discussion and uh, action as appropriate. So with that, we'll start with that item number 4A. And uh, Stephanie, are you doing this one or Ralph? Uh, that'll be me. All right. Uh, real quickly, Sally, can we just check that your audio works? Because I want to make sure it's working for the remote folks. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I, I can. Okay. Do you see me on your end? Yeah, she doesn't show muted, but um, is your microphone plugged in, Sally? Oh, there you are. Yeah, do you hear me? Yeah. Doesn't seem like yeah. she's uh, able to. As... Oh, I see the issue. Thank you. All right. okay. okay, Sally, can you try it now? Hello, can you hear Great. me? Yep, we sure can. Okay. Yes. That's much. Yes. All right, good. So with that, Ralph, you're going to kick it off? Yes. All right. Let's get my screen shared here. Okay. So our first item is at One Norway. Um, you may recall last time we had this item on the agenda and publicly noticed it. Uh, initially, there was an application for three TBZ exceptions, uh, but the town arborist was unable to approve all three of those. So the applicant took some time to revise that plan and come back uh, with a plan that could get approved by staff. So we'll go over it here. We've got one Norway. It's a 22,000 square foot or about half an acre lot at the corner of Stockbridge Ave in Nora within the R1A zoning district. And it's bounded by other low density single family homes. The applicant is requesting two TPZ exceptions, one for a 32 inch DODR cedar to 6X the tree's diameter and one for a 31 inch post redwood to 5.65 times the tree's diameter. These exceptions are to accommodate the construction of a new 3,963 square foot main residence. There is a full redevelopment of the site going on with that residence we mentioned uh, with an attached JADU and a 665 square foot detached garage. Now the site has a total of 34 trees, 20, 21 of which are classified as heritage trees. Uh, the trees, as you can see here, are primarily located around the perimeter of the residence, um, and most of them do not infringe on the uh, main building area. Uh, three exceptions, however, are trees number one, two, and 12, uh, which we can see located on the site plan here. Now, the applicant initially proposed to locate the residence close to the 60, uh, excuse me, the front setback designation, uh, which required a greater TBZ exception for both trees number two and a planning commission level TBZ exception for tree number one. Um, however, because of the very low uh, request for tree number two, the town staff was unable to support that application. And so the applicant revised the project to move the residents further back 
from that frontline designation. And that removed the need for any TPZ exception for tree number one uh, and reduced the TPZ exception for tree number two for to a sufficient level for staff approval. So per the town's heritage tree guidelines and standards, the normally required TPZ distance for any construction is 10 times the tree's diameter. Uh, staff can approve any reduction down to eight times and any further reduction requires review by the planning commission. These exceptions are reviewed for the criteria of section 2.2 B two through five of the heritage tree guidelines. Now the applicant's narrative, which is provided as attachment three uh, in the staff report, states the proposed construction would pose only slight impacts to the critical root zones for both these trees. Combined with the conditions and the construction tolerance of these trees, it was the applicant's opinion that it met standards 2.2 B2, that the species is tolerant of construction based on health, size, and age, and 2.2 B5B, the probability of failure um, is low. So the town arbors reviewed the, pro the project plans and the arbors report that was provided by the applicant and prepared a supplemental memo that's included as attachment two. This memo notes that the proposed 6x distance for tree number two is sufficient to protect the critical root zone uh, per arbor standards. The proposed TBZ of 5.65x for tree 12 does not quite meet this same threshold of 6x, but however, due to hand trenching that was done by the applicant to reveal only one root 10 feet away from the tree, whereas the house will be 14.6 feet away, and the high construction tolerance for the species, the town arbors determined that a TBZ exception could be supported and would be appropriate. Uh, in this case. So from here, the Planning Commission could approve the TPZ exception or suggest further modification to the project, or of course, deny the TPZ exception. That said, it is staff's opinion that the application meets the following finding, which is that the exception would not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the general plan. For the reasons we outlined, trees two and 12 are found to have sufficient protection areas to protect both the trees and their roots from disturbance and or damage. The specific conditions in the trees and the nature of the proposed construction and supporting arboricultural industry standard documentation and related mitigation as provided by the Arborist Report and supported by the Town Arborist. And this request is found to meet the applicable criteria as reviewed of the adopted heritage tree guidelines and standards documents. I believe we have the applicant on the line here as well to answer questions. Uh, staff is available as well. And I yield my time back to the chair. All right, very good. Any questions on this one? No questions, no questions. You know, the only thing for Sally, um, it, it, one of the things that come on, on these are, that is a variable is the percent of, of, uh, tr of tree root system that's covered by the exception, which is mm -hmm. a nuance that uh, sort of, it, on this one, it's not a factor, but it, just in general, it'd be nice to start highlighting, highlighting that unless it's highlighted here and I missed it. But that way, you know, sometimes it's, it's within the 5.6 X area, but it's 25% of the tree and other times it's like 4%. And that makes a difference in terms of the impact of what the, well, how much impact that would be, I would think. And that makes sense. It, it's, we can start requesting that of the applicant. Um, some do submit that and some don't, but it, it can be something we just require going forward. I think that's worthwhile because one of the things we're doing on this, on this, uh, uh, on this ordinance is we're gathering data that will help us determine what, what will be a valid answer. And one of the things that would be a valid, uh, I would think that would be a factor would be what percent of the, of the area is covered by the exception. Okay. All right. That's all I had. All right. Uh, the, so we can hear from the, uh, we can hear from the applicant. Uh, uh, is, is, that, is that Alicia? Is that, are you the, all right, you can, you're mute. You're on mute. She's on. She's muted. Ralph, we're gonna we're gonna pull yeah, you I up. Yeah, I see you're unmuted now, Alicia. Let us know if uh, can't hear you. Hold on one second. Did something. Alicia, did you, can you try saying something or are able to hear you? Yep, you're still not there. Hmm. I think that's. There you go. I hear the beep, so you should be able to talk now. Oh, yeah, it's still not there. Yeah. Alicia, do you want to try calling in with the uh, phone number for the meeting? Do you have that on hand? To have a truly hybrid meeting, we need 12 
technologies to, for any one person to be part of it. We didn't have this problem last time. Uh, no, so, um, and I know we just had Sally was working okay on her sound, so I'm not sure if it's specific to Alicia. Well, or, or maybe or turn Sally's off again and then bring this one in. Maybe they only do one at a time. Maybe, let's try that. All right, Alicia, can we, can, no, we can't hear you either. We tried a new technique, but it didn't work. She's going to call in. Yeah, okay. We did test this prior to the meeting. Being, being on mute will help because. In progress. Uh, through the chair, I put in the group chat via the Zoom the call in number. So if the applicant can try to phone in, perhaps we can hear audio that way. And it is handy for me to have it up here on my iPad because I, I spotted that when it came through. Stephanie, I just wanted to confirm you can see me and hear me. Is that correct? I can hear you, but we can't see you. There's no camera on you. Oh, there is up on the wall. It's on uh, right now. I can it? see you. Yeah. See what I can do over there. I don't know if you're on the upper right. No, we can see her spot, but I can't see her on camera. We cannot see you. Yeah, okay. like we, we can see her. We can see the spot where she is, but we can't see her on the camera. Okay. Yeah. On, try to fix on, on the screen. All right, Alicia, did you have uh, you have your phone up? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Okay. Thank you for Perfect. thank you for uh, changing the path. All right, good. Of Go course. ahead. Okay, I just Here. wanted to say thank you to Ralph and Sally for the for the presentation and for your help um, and the suggestions for the the redesign of this uh, this plan. Uh, so this is our first project in the town of Atherton, first of what we hope to see many, um, and uh, we feel that this current design uh, is the best off, uh, the best way to to move forward given the constraints of the site and the large trees across the back of the property. Um, we did do a square footage reduction to the front of the house, as Ralph mentioned, as well as to the garage to accommodate the TPZ uh, protections for these trees. Um, so we feel that this meets the requirements. And, you know, we, our number one goal is to always preserve as many trees as possible on site. That's what makes uh, these sites special is the presence of mature, healthy landscaping. Uh, so we, we do try our best to be thoughtful with the designs um, to try and maintain as many trees on site as possible. So uh, with that said, we're confident that this design meets the requirements um, laid out by Sally, and we hope that the planning commission will approve. Thank you. Any questions, uh, the applicant? Thank you, Alicia. And thank you for the flexibility of the setup. Uh, is there anyone else here to talk on this, speak on this item? I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand or wave or anything. So I'll go ahead and close the public uh, comment section and or public session and bring it back to the commission for discussion and action is appropriate. I have another question. Yeah, I, I, no, I think it's yeah, it's pretty clear. straightforward. Yeah, I went and looked at the site, and it uh, looks pretty straightforward. In the back of my head, I'm thinking part of it's because of the size of the uh, property, but it's still within the the uh, uh, buildable area. Correct. There's nothing outside the buildable area in terms of the house. Is that correct? Oh, correct. Okay, good. I'm fine with it. So I need a motion. Take the motion. All right. Uh, I move that the planning commission fix find the exception to the tree protection zone for two heritage trees, tree number two to six X, the tree diameter and tree number 12 to 5.65 times X for a proposed main residence at one Norway would not be contrary for the purpose and intent of the general plan for the reasons outlined in the staff report and that the commission approved the TPZ exception subject to the conditions as listed in the draft TPZ exception permit. All right, good, moved. Second. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Any any other comments? We're ready for the vote, and we're still doing the vote by uh, by individual because we have an app uh, because not everyone's in the room. So let's go ahead then on the on the roll call, please. Chair Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lerner. Yes. Commissioner Narnsek. 
Yes. Commissioner Conte. Yes. Thank you. All right, and Alicia, thanks for the flexibility once again, and thanks for waiting. We'll see you again. Good luck on the project. All right, item uh, number four B is a is an item at 401 Fletcher Drive, but apparently we are going to continue that or uh, to a date unspecific. Is that correct? Because they're still they're working on the on the plan with this. Is that correct, Ralph? Correct. So initially it was a application for a special structures permit to increase the height of the house, um, but in our review we discovered that there will also be TPZ exceptions needed for so the applicant needed time to prepare that application as well. All right, cool. All right, so we need, uh, I'll move that we continue the special structures permit uh, at 401 Fletcher Drive to a date uh, un unspecified at this point. We'll get a date later on when this all worked out. Correct, yeah, they didn't quite get their materials in time for the June meeting, so perhaps by July, but we'll, we'll see. All right, great. I have a mo motion, is there a second? I'll second. 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 All right. No, the, the, the second on mm -hmm. Perry. That's all right. All right. That's good. All right. I roll call, please. Chair Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lerner. Yes. Commissioner Narnsek. Yes. Commissioner Conse. Yes. Thank you. All right. Great. Then we'll go to item 4C, which is tree protection zone exception for 268 uh, Catalpa. Catal Catal is that how you say it? Catalpa? Catalpa Drive in Atherton. I wasn't familiar with the street before, but I am now since I went there. All right, so with that, then we'll go through the same procedure. We'll go with, the, with an overview from the staff and then we'll come back with a discussion from the applicant uh, and then anyone else who would like to speak on the item. Uh, with that, uh, Stephanie, is this yours or Ralph? Oh, this will be me, Shirley. All right, good. Thank you. You're making, making your money, you're earning your money today. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, good. As long as the audio keeps working. <laughs> um, all right, well, thank you, uh, Chair Lane. Uh, so the property at 268 Catalpa is a 40,000 or roughly 0.93 acre, I guess we call that a, uh, an Atherton acre lot located within the Arwenay Zoning District and bounded by other low density single family homes. The applicant is requesting a TPZ exception for one heritage tree, a 19.3 inch coast live oak. Let me bring up my presentation here, give you some context. Uh, and this is to accommodate an addition to the existing 5,262 square foot main residence. The site also contains the existing pool and pool house. The applicant is also proposing an addition and conversion of this existing pool house to an ADU. That part of the project does not require any TPZ exceptions or other action by the planning commission this evening. As we can see from the existing conditions here, we have our 19.3 inch oak here um, within eight feet of the main residence or 5X, the normally required 10X TBZ distance. So the applicant is provide, uh, excuse me, is proposing to expand the second floor area and extend the footprint of the first floor further into the TBZ area for this tree or tree number 31 per the Arborist report. Here we see an overview of the site plan with the addition space highlighted in blue. And here is a slightly closer look here of the normally required 10X, 8X, uh, as well as the generally requested 6X TPZ for these Planning Commission TPZ exceptions. So as stated, the applicant is requesting to reduce the TPZ distance from currently 5X or eight feet to 2.5X or just over four feet. Now the Arbus report notes that the tree is in good condition uh, and has good tolerance to construction impacts uh, this arborist report, which was prepared in January 2022 by Kilty Arborist Services, uh, also notes that the, excuse me, um, that's my place here. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, also notes, in addition to the project narrative submitted by the applicant as attachment three, the belief that this project satisfies the following specific criteria, criteria of the heritage tree guidelines and standards. First, uh, section 2.2 B2C, that there are no roots over two inches in diameter that need to be cut. The applicant states no roots, that no roots of that size will be cut, and the indication based on the tree's growth position is the predominant root growth is away from the house. Now, the applicant has not yet completed an excavation by hand, but notes that in a situation where roots over two inches were to be encountered, they would modify the project as needed. Second, second section 2.2 B4, uh, the applicant may apply based on scenarios other than those set out in section 22B. They note their belief that there's no impact to tree branches or the canopy from the project. No trimming or canopy reduction will be necessary. They also state that this constitutes a reasonable and necessary expansion to the existing house. Third, uh, section 2.2B5B, the probability of failure for those trees. 
the applicant notes that there's low probability due to the condition uh, and also that the tree has already maintained this good condition even with its close proximity to the existing house. Uh, fourth, that the number size, excuse me, 2.2 B5D, uh, that due to the number of trees on the site um, and the effect of the requested exception upon shade, noise buffers, protection from wind damage, et cetera, um, that there will be no impact to the health, safety, and general welfare of the area and the town as a whole. The applicant states that, again, there are many other oak trees on the property not to be impacted by the project and state, quote, there will be no reduction of the shade, noise buffers, protection from wind damage, air pollution, historic value, scenic beauty, health, safety, and general welfare of the area and town as a whole. And lastly, uh, section 2.2 B5E, the applicant argued uh, that's the necessity to allow reasonable use or other enjoyment of the property. The applicant again states that the current house does not meet the owner's needs and there's no other practical configuration for the project to allow for the desired expansion of two existing bedrooms on the first floor and the addition of a bathroom. So the town arborist did review the applicant's materials, including the arborist report that was submitted and found that the TPZ exception cannot be supported based on the following findings. The arborist, town arborist supplemental memo was included as attachment two. So the first of those findings being best management practices. Per those best management practices, the typical request for a TPZ reduction would be to a minimum of six X, uh, whereas the request in this case is only 2.5 X away. Second, the critical root zone. So again, anything less than 6X is considered to be within the critical root zone for trees of the species. Um, the applicant is already take, asking to take up more of the already encroached upon critical root zone space. And in fact, the additional encroachment constitutes a 90% increase in the overall encroachment into the TPZ area. Third is conflicts with the house. So again, the tree is already very close to the existing residents. So expanding upon that um, could lead to further issues in the past, either for the tree or the residence itself. Fourth, um, fire code. So it's possible in the future that Menlo Fire will recommend no trees or shrubs be within 10 feet of structures. So in this case, looking forward, um, it's not seem reasonable to suggest locating the structure any closer to the tree. And lastly, fifth, just reflecting on our overall TPZ guidelines. These have been recently updated to regulate um, and address parameters from existing heritage trees. So in summation, it is the finding of staff that this requested TPZ exception would be contrary to the purpose and intent of the Athens General Plan and staff is recommending denial of the request based on the following findings. That it's not meet the best agricultural practices for TPZ distances will lead to conflicts between the tree and the existing house does not have a designated protection area sufficiently large enough to protect the tree and its roots from disturbance and damage. These again are based on the uh, arboricultural industry standard best practices as determined by planning staff and the town arborist. And we do not find that this meets the applicable criteria of the town's adopted heritage tree guidelines and standards document. The planning commission of course could modify uh, or approve the request. Uh, we have included an alternative formal motion uh, for that purpose. Um, otherwise, staff is available for questions, as is the applicant and the town arborist. Uh, thank you. I have my time back to you. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, but does anybody else have a question? No. All right, Not yet. All right good. So, uh, Sally, um, th this tree's in the wrong spot already, and this would make it more, worse. So, did the applicant at all talk to you about removing the tree and replacing it, uh, uh, coming up with a, a tree that would be replacing it at all? Uh, nobody discussed that with me uh, for a tree removal. Um, I would definitely have to review that and visit the site to if they were interested in that. And I can't tell you right now if it would be something I could approve or not. Right. I understand that. Uh, and it might not be something that you could approve anyway, but it would be yeah. something when I visited the site, it was clear to me that this out, this tree's in the wrong spot and it's and it's it's uh, with the new fire code and everything else, it, it would be better to move it than it would be or replace it rather than make it worse. So we'll, I'll listen to the applicant now, see what their thoughts are. Uh, Gabby, did you have anything on this one? Any questions before we, any questions? questions. Is there, any way to, um, is there any way to cover up the, some of the roots or some, some of the issues there? Um, with additional soil or something to that effect? 
No, you wouldn't want to add additional soil. And also just with the, they're proposing to put the house three to four feet away. I mean, you're just mm -hmm. definitely working on that area, even to protect the tree with fencing. I'm not sure if that, that's not even possible when you're right. doing that. Yes, I've seen fencing around, um, yeah. you know, at the, at the trees, so, yeah. okay. All right, uh, Thank the, you. we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Francis, are you on this one? Who, who's the applicant or the representative? Hi, yes. Okay, good. Very good. We're, we're open, officially I'm opening the public hearing, so that's officially open. So go ahead, Francis, go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you, planning commissioners, town planning staff, and neighbors. We appreciate the time and effort you have put into reviewing our project. The primary issue and the reason this project is being presented before you this evening. And go ahead and introduce yourself, Francis. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah. this, I'm Francis Pham from Topos Architects. Okay. Very good. Um, we believe that our project warrants such an exemption through a number of exceptions um, that was just presented. Uh, to summarize, give the exceptions. Uh, one, uh, no roots over two inches in di diameter will be cut. Uh, we will work <clears throat> with the town uh, of Atherton Arborist to modify a new foundation as needed. Uh, secondly, there will be no reduction or impact of the tree branches or canopy. Third, there is a low probability of tree impact or failure as the tree is already very close to the house. Fourth, um, again, there are many close live oak trees throughout the property. Uh, there will be no reduction of shade, noise buffers, or historic value. Uh, five, our proposed expansion is just enough to allow the expansion of the bedroom and the addition of a bathroom to meet the family's current needs. Our clients have raised their four children at this home and would like to continue providing the needed space for their family. We believe that the exception is necessary for our client to enjoy reasonable use of their property. We believe that the exception does not have a negative impact on the community or any privacy concerns. We respectfully request that you grant our project the proposed tree exemption. And um, we would also like to include that uh, we would gladly um, support the idea of removing the tree and planting something in replacement of that. Um, we, we agree that the position of the tree currently is not in, in the correct place. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any questions of the applicant? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and, and anyone else here to speak on the item? Then I'll go ahead and bring it back to the commission uh, for discussion and action appropriate. Yeah, I'm, this is a straightforward one for me. I would not approve it, but I would, uh, I, and I've got a question for staff on this is, um, it, it, can we, can just like on the last one, can we, could we possibly continue this item so the applicant doesn't have to go through the, uh, the uh, applic application process and all the uh, fees associated with it? If we're going to continue it to have them reevaluate the plan with the idea of removing the tree, is that possible on this or not? Uh, no, it would not be possible because that would be a separate, different formal application. Different okay. set of findings, different set of criteria, uh, different public notice that would need to be mailed out with uh, different specifications. Okay. Well, when I, I went to the site and I looked at uh, what, what I went and looked at all of, all different angles on it, and this tree is too close to the house now, and I, there's just no way that it's going to be safely uh, safe safe way to guarantee that uh, it would be not damaged somehow by expand by reducing the, the area, and then on top of that, with the new with the new recommendation from the fire district and other, we'd just be walking right into a, a more difficult situation. On, on a tree that's just flat out in the wrong spot. So I, I, if, if the applicant came back it, uh, and uh, Sally got a chance to look at it, I, I, for me, I, I don't have any problem with, with that tree being removed and replaced in a, in a, with, with another tree in a better place because of lo a lot will handle it, but uh, I couldn't approve this. I've never seen uh, a request for 2.5. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Low. yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I agree with um, Sally's. Go ahead, Mr. I, I agree with Sally's findings. So I have no, no other questions. All right. I do too. All right, good. Gabby, any comments or questions? Yeah. All right. All right. So 
with that, you ready, Gabby? Are you ready for uh, are you ready for us to take an action on this? All right, okay. I need a I need a motion. Yeah, go ahead. I move that the Planning Commission find the exception to the tree protection zone TPZ for one heritage tree number thirty one to two and a half times the tree's diameter for a proposed addition to the main residence at two six eight Catalpa Drive would be contrary to the purpose and intent of the general plan for the reasons outlined in the staff report and that the commission deny the TPZ exception. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. All right, all right, we have a second, that's good. So let's have a roll call, please. Chair Lane. Uh, I'm voting yes on the motion to deny. <laughs> likewise. <Commissioner> yeah, <Narnsek. laughs> you, you have to say yes. Yes, likewise. Commissioner yeah. Narnsek? Yes. Commissioner Conse. Yes. Didn't All right. deny. Right. So Francis, just uh, you get back to your you get back to your uh, to your uh, uh, homeowner and let them let them know uh, that uh, the, first of all the two and a half uh, two and a half uh, uh, criteria has never been approved ever, and we we wouldn't uh, have a tendency to and the trees in the, uh, I believe at least the trees in the wrong spot and but it would be worthwhile to to uh, look evaluate that it'd be a much better plan for them they might even be able to do uh, more exciting things with you with the architect on the project so I would recommend that they they, they rethink it and uh, rethink that position on that tree. Okay, great. Thank you so much. It doesn't guarantee that it'll be approved. I'm just telling you my own personal opinion, but it sounds to me like at least the, we, we could be receptive, more, much more receptive to that option. Great. And I believe the owners will be it as well. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And you can follow up with staff in terms of the, what the next steps would be. All right. Thank you. All right. And then after, after a year of waiting, we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to go out to item 4D, the schoolmaster plan for 50 Valparaiso at Menlo School, is our is our annual good good news report. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to start with the yeah, staff report. Says that, okay, so let's go ahead with the staff report. Thank you, Chair Lane. I'll, yeah. I'll keep it brief here. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't steal all their thunder because <laughs> I, will not. I will not. We have the we have the full staff report and the detailed 2022 master plan update from Menlo School that is uh, before you tonight, asking for consideration to accept um, such plans. So, uh, in summary, Menlo School, as you have seen, has prepared their update for 2022, uh, providing updates um, as warranted and as further specified within the municipal code which does require every private school within town to provide an annual update to their originally approved master plan for each site. So of primary note um, here at Menlo School, the campus did uh, return to full on-site instruction over the course of the last two years related to COVID. Um, they have, a, <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one point of note that these commissioners may recall is uh, they, they, Menlo School, were um, approved with an agreement plan that established temporary increase in their maximum enrollment number. Um, they are still within that two-year time frame. That uh, agreement did allow for that temporary increase of 23 students uh, to exceed the otherwise allowable maximum set in their original approvals of 795 students. The school did perform their own mechanical self-monitoring um, in compliance with their requirements for a transportation demand monitoring or TDM plan to help uh, minimize and um, reduce traffic impacts um, to the neighborhood and trips to the school. So that self-monitoring uh, did conclude that their actual AM and PM traffic counts um, did hit under their identified targets um, as well as the parking utilization also under what their targets um, are. Uh, the school did hold a, meet, a neighborhood meeting earlier this month, um, and I'm sure more detail can be given by the school, but in summary, the um, response or summary provided to staff that there was approximately five members of the neighborhood that attended and all of the feedback received was positive. So with all of that, uh, staff is re recommending that the commission do accept the 2022 uh, master plan update from Menlo School. Great. All right. With that, any questions of staff? No, thank you. All right, then I'll go ahead and uh, open up the public uh, comment section. We'll start with the applicant. Uh, and so go ahead and reintroduce yourself and let's get going. All right, and we'll make sure you got a microphone too. Okay. 
Uh, dear members of the Planning Commission and neighbors, uh, Dan Healy and I are very pleased to be here uh, in person, uh, very exciting, uh, for this year's Menlo School Master Plan update. As always, we appreciate the opportunity to share uh, what the school is doing and reaffirm our commitment to being good neighbors and express that we, of course, aspire to contribute positively to the town of Atherton, the community, and our neighbors. Uh, a special thanks goes out in particular today, uh, comments uh, regarding what happened yesterday in Texas. Uh, you may not know, I don't know what you know about your police department, but pretty remarkable that the police department uh, had a police officer on our campus for the day today. Good. Uh, not something planned, but, but something really truly remarkable and appreciated. So thank you for that. Um, I kind of bucketed my comments. So first is, how are we doing? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, as mentioned, we had our annual neighbor uh, meeting and the discussion and tone was extremely positive. Uh, I've been at Menlo for five years. It is without doubt the most positive meeting that I've been part of. Um, and I would honestly say that all the comments were super positive uh, and many people expressed that the school is better than we, a better neighbor than we've ever been. Great. Um, the school is not entirely back to the status quo, but we are getting very close. Uh, virtually everyone is back on campus, student, students, faculty, and staff. Classes are normal with the exception that all members of our community are encouraged to wear masks when indoors. Um, as we have done throughout the pandemic, we continue to provide on-site testing with everyone testing weekly. Uh, lunch continues outdoors, but otherwise we are general, generally back to operating as we did prior to the pandemic, and uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, enrollment. Uh, as detailed last year, we believe our response to the pandemic was so positively received uh, that we got higher acceptance rates than historically we have gotten. And because that happened, we ended up over our allotted enrollment of 795. We apologize for that. Um, enrollment for the current year was 800, or was or is 818 students, 23 students over. We anticipate that the enrollment for this coming school year is going to be 806. Uh, and we believe the following year will be back to 795. Good. Uh, per the plan that we put forth and worked with, with the town. On traffic, uh, despite the higher enrollment, we remain comfortably below both our morning and afternoon thresholds. Uh, parking, as mentioned, is also below our thresholds. One of the things that we did this year was we uh, improved, I think, significantly our home and school program. Uh, we got a new provider that, frankly, is a better provider, a more reliable provider. They have an app, parents know where their kids are at all times, that kind of thing. Uh, we employed all new buses, uh, our buses before were 2004. Um, we uh, got our first electric bus, which was really cool. And with our provider, we're actually the first school to, to pay up and get an electric bus. Uh, and we added a fifth bus. So we had four, we now have five. Um, we also continue to offer incentives to our community for carpooling, taking alternative means of transportation, offering shuttle services throughout the day for to the Menlo Park Caltrans station. Um, and when we met with the neighbors, the neighbors uh, said traffic as typical along Valparaiso can be heavy at times, but they they indicated that they did not think the school was unduly responsible for that traffic. Mm -hmm. Uh, project, since we last met in person anyway, the school quadrupled our on-site solar energy generation. We ha now have three campus buildings where virtually the entire roofs are solar panels. Uh, this project is more reflective of the projects that we will execute in terms of their scope and scale in the near term. We have no plans at present to build any new buildings or further develop our athletic fields, um, at least again in the near term. Uh, of course, that's always subject to change. There's always carton out there, but uh, we don't see that uh, 
in the near term. Uh, that concludes my comments. Diane and I are happy uh, to address any questions or feedback from either the planning commission or the neighbors. Yeah. You have questions? I do have some questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What, what percentage do you think of um, total electricity usage are comprised of renewable or solar right now? Um, I don't know yet. Uh, we've, we've had the solar for about a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a Tesla system. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a crazy thing that you will find hard to believe. Uh, we operated for almost a year with Tesla only build, billing us for one of the three accounts. Uh, those, those bills show the amount of electricity generated. Um, and for the first time in the last month, I got all three. So I don't have the other 11 months out of the 12 yet. Right. Uh, as silly as that is, we right. pay them for the energy, but we basically got free energy for two of the three accounts for the year. Yeah. Was it connected? Was it interconnected? Mm -hmm. It was, and they just didn't bill you. They just didn't bill I, I, Next time we talk, I'd be interested to see like what percentage uh, compared yeah, to the previous. Yeah, I, I am too. I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm an environmental person, yeah. uh, sustainable person. Uh, I won the 2000, for my company, I won the 2013 Silicon Valley Water Conservation Award against Google and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it's been part of me for a very long time and I'm gonna continue to, uh, to work to make the school as sustainable as we possibly Thank you, can. great idea, yeah, that's all. That's it, all right. I've got a, I've got a question about the, uh, the there's a, uh, Item in there that highlights uh, the possibility of uh, of uh, of uh, residences on the on the site, um, and for for teachers or staff and other. And the question I had twofold: good, first of all, and that would help a lot of things for us in this in the town. So, go for it. And, and then the other part would be: have you uh, have you talked to the other school nearby schools at all about the po that possibility, and maybe a either a, um, a uh, situation where they would be partners or you know, you know they come up with a way to help support it another way where they rent uh, from you or whatever uh it's a fair question um, and go ahead and introduce yourself for those uh, who are Sam Healy head of school at Menlo yeah um I have talked to Rich Dioli primarily head of school at Sacred Heart yeah uh, Rich and I have talked actually for eight or nine years about shared housing um Town, I think, knows that the school owns uh, two apartment buildings, 10 units in Menlo Park. Uh, purchased over the last nine years, we did approach Sacred Heart about the possibility of uh, having a shared space, uh, maybe even further away from school and busing, you know, joining in on the busing. Uh, at this point, Sacred Heart doesn't seem interested in, in taking that route, um, but we have approached them. The challenge for us in terms of, um, you know, buying effectively land in Atherton is this just cost prohibitive relative to what we could get close to the train line in San Carlos or in San Mateo. And, and the challenge for us on our campus, frankly, is that not all of our teachers are beating down our doors to live on the campus. It's right. a, um, a little distance is always yeah. nice. And, yeah. um, so we continue to explore it. It's always a possibility. We had a conversation as recently as last week about this possibility, but I don't think we have anything in the offing right now. I, I did have a, a conversation with, um, Council member DeGolia uh, last week, we had lunch together to talk about this possibility and um, very interested in seeing if we can as a town and as a school system generate more possibilities for teachers to, to be able to live in the town. I think that's right. good for children, it's good for the town, um, but I'm not sure that um, without a whole lot of financial help, I'm not sure that the schools are gonna be able to afford a plot of land in Atherton. I also had a question as well. Yeah. All right, hold on one second. All right, good. So uh, that that's a that's a good update, Gabby. Uh, I just let him wonder, but I haven't finished what he was uh, speaking to. Uh, anything anything else then? Is, did you have? Were you all? The, all right, Gabby, go ahead. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, some of the private schools in in particular in San Francisco have been faced with a lot of cybersecurity issues, uh, where people are going into um, systems. Uh, are you doing anything to mitigate that, or is that an issue for you at all at your school? I noticed you have a tech innovation center in accordance with your plan. 
is there any budgeting for that that might be helpful to your students, your staff, and you know, the administration at large? Because that is becoming a problem with Hamlin and some other some of the other private schools, particularly in the Pacific Heights area. Thank you. Can I just clarify the question, Commissioner? Is it about cybersecurity? Is that what I heard? Yes. Are you are you budgeting or addressing some of those issues that are coming up in some other private schools that might affect you? Yeah. So cybersecurity is a conversation that we have frequently on our campus. We 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 try not to hold very much data, but as you might imagine, especially during times of COVID, we've got a lot of health data. We've got people's um, addresses. We've got, in some cases, financial transactions that we're doing, and so. Um, so we take cybersecurity quite seriously. The, the good news is almost everything now is in the cloud. And so we host very little on our physical campus in the way of servers. In fact, we're, we'll spend much of the summer decommissioning most of the remaining servers that we have on our campus. So almost everything is in the cloud now, which is a sign of our times, but uh, it is a never ending um, cat and mouse game of the, the defenses that we put up and then you know the new creative ways that um, that cyber criminals um, find to to attack uh, all kinds of organizations. So mm -hmm. so we're our, our efforts will be ongoing, and I and I'm sure never ending. Yeah. So you use something like the Google Cloud, something something to that effect. Yeah, we, we use actually, Google or something. Yeah, a, a wide array of of cloud based services. And yeah. And try to vary them and not have all our eggs in one basket. But yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you for answering that. You know, I think that the, the most uh, exciting thing that you might want to do is, I've been on the commission now for almost 10 years, is you might want to go back and see the video of the meetings nine and eight years ago, and uh, you'll find out what a tremendous improvement you've made over the years uh, since you've been there uh, to really turn around the relationship and the whole communication process and the and the re responsibility, uh, the, the is 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 uh, just state of the art for the community. And anytime another school comes before us, I recommend and talk to you about what you've done uh, into uh, about every every aspect of your planning and more than planning, the actual delivery of the plan. So I really do appreciate the difference. And and I was I was vice chair for one of those meetings and chair for another one. And uh, I like this meeting a lot better. <laughs> All right. So we we have a, uh, anything else then before I close the public uh, comment? Uh, just uh, an invitation. The music at Menlo program is a is a world class speaker uh, is a world class chamber music festival. It's they're having their twentieth anniversary uh, this summer. They're uh, an organization that we host on our campus. And nice. They'll they'll be able to have a, their full season in the new speaker center, which you all approved. Feels yeah. like decades ago yeah it was probably just four or five years ago. it was about six I think it really is a stunning space we don't have anything to do with the program itself but we would highly encourage you to come and if we can uh help connect you with the people who are running the program i think it'd be worth your while to come and just see and hear what you help to make possible so we're grateful for it all right great thanks if i come i'll promise not to bring any of my trumpets with me <laughs> all right all right i'll go ahead and uh, is there anyone else here to uh, speak on this topic I don't see anybody online waving or anything, so I'll go ahead and close the the uh, public uh, comment section. Thank you both for coming and, and uh, waiting for this. And we're ready for a motion to accept the plan or deny it if you want to do the case. I can, I can make the motion. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission accept for filing the 2022 Annual Master Plan Update and the TDM Monitoring Report from Menlo School. All right, we'll have a roll call, please. Oh, a second. I need a second. I'll second. All right. There we have a second. Yeah. Good thing I read, read my notes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Chair Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lerner. Yes. Commissioner Narnsek. Yes. Commissioner Conte. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Me. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for coming again. Thanks for continuing Thanks. the great work. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Very good. All right, with that then, item 4E is the amendments to the Atherton uh, Municipal Code on landscape screening. And uh, we'll go ahead and I guess, uh, Stephanie, this is yours? It is. All right, good. Okay, um, so tonight the commission is being asked to consider Municipal Code text amendments to chapter 17.50, which is the landscape screening ordinance, 
and to ultimately make a recommendation to the city council as to whether or not adopt such ordinance amendments. So the topic of considering possible amendments to the town's landscape screening ordinance has been discussed at numerous uh, both planning commission and city council study sessions since early 2001, uh, with the most recent discussion occurring in a study session format at the planning commission meeting last month in April. So following uh, last month's meeting, staff has prepared a revised draft landscape screening ordinance for commission review and discussion. Uh, and again, with the request for an ultimate recommendation to the city council. <clears throat> the proposed uh, draft ordinance uh, is included within attachment one to the staff report. Uh, it is included with tracked changes. So you can see the proposed textual amendments uh, that are being considered. Uh, I also just like to note that this uh, proposed draft ordinance has been reviewed by the town attorney's office as well. So there ultimately are four topics um, that were directed uh, by the city council and the commission that staff evaluated for potential revisions. And I'll briefly discuss, discuss each of those um, and any subsequent proposed text amendments associated. So the first topic is related to um, hillside screening or screening landscape screening for hillside lots and specificity on both planting types and uh, planting sizes. None of those topics are currently addressed within the existing landscape screening ordinance. So the topic of screening um, on hillside lots was initially focused on detached accessory both buildings and structures um, and screening such buildings and structures from the down sloped neighbor as the aesthetic height of those buildings can appear taller than what the actual constructed height may be that does meet the minimum development standards or meets the maximum heights. Recommendations um, in the draft ordinance do include creating different minimum screening requirements for hillside versus non hillside lots. Uh, the distinction between the two is that hillside lots are proposed to now encompass any lot with an average cross slope of 15% or greater. Um, in hillside lots, it's recommended that any tree or shrub that's included as part of a landscape screening plan be at least 36 inch box size or larger, where such minimum sizes on non hillside lots or lots that have less than a 15% slope have minimum sizes of 24 inch box. Uh, both of these requirements I should note are greater than what the existing regulations otherwise um, require. <clears throat> Language has also been added that prohibits the planting uh, within five feet of any uh, building that may conflict with any potential um, associated requirements of the Menlo Park Fire Department. We discussed this a bit at the last April meeting. Uh, there will be amendments to the fire code anticipated come 2022. Uh, it was a request and recommendation from the fire marshal that our landscape screen ordinance be consistent. But at this point, since we don't know exactly what those provisions are going to read, the language uh, prepared within attachment one uh, does leave it open, but so that it does not conflict with any codified fire requirements. Um, regarding uh, species specificity, language has been added that encourages California native plants or trees, as well as those that are drought tolerant. Uh, it further prohibits specific types of tree species to be planted as part of a landscape screening plan. The list of such trees uh, was taken directly from the town's existing heritage tree ordinance that also provides a list of, of disfavored trees within town, given their species or screening capabilities. And lastly, um, language has been added um, with specificity to address existing heritage trees and any potential conflict that a new landscape screening could pose to the protection or preservation of maintaining existing heritage trees um, as in associated with their tree protection zones or TPZs like we discussed in prior applications. Um, I should note that there, uh, although not part of the municipal code amendments under consideration, we have included as one of the attachments to the staff report, a revised landscape screening checklist that will provide an applicant detail up front when it's time to prepare such a landscape screening plan that they have adequate detail that will allow the town arborist to um, uh, make a determination of compliance with any changes that get integrated into the ordinance.
Okay, so the second topic of uh, potential revision to the landscape screening ordinance um, has to address what we call towers or architectural projections. So just in summary, what these are, these are segments of buildings, primarily main residences, but they could be on detached buildings as well that effectively pop up greater than what the overall height of such building is. These are allowed by right and under the current zoning ordinance at limited square footages. Uh, the associated landscape screening amendments um, are intended to help further screen these I'm going to use the term um, vertical pop-ups over the roof lines of such buildings. Uh, specifically, there's a recommendation to add uh, a minimum of two 48 inch size box trees to be planted inwards towards the property adjacent in, uh, in proximity to such architectural projection or pop-up. Um, I would like to note that this proposed amendment would be in addition to any other what we'll call standard landscape screening requirements that would be applicable to the lot, whether that lot's on a hillside or not. Uh, the third item at, your, at the last uh, planning commission study session um, last month, the commission did direct staff to evaluate possible amendments related to the screening of detached accessory dwelling units or other housing units that are allowed um, by state law to be situated only four feet from a property line. There was discussion that acknowledging the challenges that are associated with just that limited distance uh, or area uh, the limited planting area, the appropriate type of species that can grow in such a small area, and the feasibility of those types of plants actually screening such a building only four feet from a property line. So um, as such, the recommendation coming from staff that's integrated in the draft ordinance uh, is some language that could consider voluntary off-site landscape screening planting on the adjacent property or whichever property shares uh, closely to that four foot uh, setback distance to such a building um, that would address the spirit and intent of the landscape screening if it's not physically possible to um, accomplish such on the subject site. So the last topic that the commission directed staff to evaluate um, pertained to landscape screening of front yard fences or walls um, that face the public right of way uh, or a street. So within attachment one, staff did not make any amendments to the draft landscape screening ordinance uh, for a series of reasons that are specified in the staff report, but ultimately um, does believe that the issue should be evaluated in a greater global context related to possible amendments within the fence ordinance, um, given the possible implications of adding landscape within the public right of way and the series of what will perhaps term as domino effects or other factors that need to be taken into consideration, such as utility lines, uh, green infrastructure requirements, maintenance within a public right of way, but planted by a private property owner. So there's um, other issues that we would want to evaluate in further detail and um, do believe perhaps most appropriately addressed um, in consideration of the town's fence ordinance versus the town's uh, landscape screening ordinance. Uh, with that, I do have, um, uh, I should note that the draft language um, beyond consult of the town's attorneys was also consulted directly with the town arborist as the town arborist is the town staff member who primarily implements this ordinance. Um, and I think Sally's still here on the line and um, would be available to answer any questions as well. Um, so with that, uh, again, happy to answer any questions. Ultimately, staff is recommending that the commission consider the amendments as proposed, provide any other direction to staff on further changes that they'd like to see and make a recommendation to the council to adopt amendments to the town's landscape screening ordinance. All right. I've got a couple questions, but any other questions? Any other questions? I have a couple. Go ahead. You can go with yours. Um, so if, if, when someone builds an ADU four feet, for instance, from the property line, is it prohibited to uh, put plantings between the ADU and the property line for fire reasons or other reasons? No, it's not currently prohibited. Okay, but what, I guess what you're saying is that right now there's a recommendation not to have any proposals or requirements for that. 
there's a recommendation from the Menlo Park Fire Department Fire Marshal to not have any such plantings. Um, he has informed us that there are fire code amendments that are anticipated to be adopted come 2023 uh -huh. that would prohibit the plantings. We don't haven't seen the language. We don't know okay. how specific that is. Um, but there is nothing existing within the town's municipal code that would prohibit plantings. Thank you. Okay. That's it. All right. Any questions? Andrew? No, I don't. All right. Gabby, any questions? I, I'll have some after you. No, no thank All right. you. All right. Uh, so just, just for clarification, what was the thinking uh, behind the change in size of the plant for the existing level of, of uh, lots? Sure, I can answer that and then Sally chime in. Um, yeah. What we're what the town arborists have been finding is that the existing regulations of a 24 inch box or 15 gallon just wasn't meeting the adequate screening needs. Um, and enough. the current language did give the town arborist discretion to require larger um, plantings, which for the most part uh, ended up being the um, requirement by the town arborist. So in order to try and uh, remove that discretion, it was trying to be integrated um, as a base requirement, objective standard, I should say. Great. It also made it so that the person felt like they were giving us something by doing that. And they might want to push back on something <laughs> else. I got that. Uh, Sally, you're, you're either in the witness pro uh, protection program or you just have bad lighting. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a forest. I have bad lighting. All right, um, good. Yeah, so the idea was that a lot of times uh, people push back and say, well, the code says I can plant a 15 gallon. Yeah. Um, and really, I want people to even plant larger than 24 inch box. So I, I at least want to would like to codify the 24 inch box for flat lots um, with no special circumstances. All right, uh, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. It'll make your it'll make things a lot cleaner to the, the, the overall conversation. The other the other question I had, and I, I like everything. I've just questioned the. Um, the methodology around enforcing the tower architectural protection uh, element, and how is that different than any other, uh, I know, math, you know, sort of visual uh, uh, improvement we'd make on any other part of the house? Why is the tower such a significant uh, designation? I mean, I mean, what I'm thinking about is uh, what what comes up is is a um, is a dormer a tower? You know, if it sticks out of the top of a roof of a house. I know it's not, but would somebody say, "Well, wait a minute, that sticks out too, and that's higher"? So I'm just, so I'm just questioning the way it would be implemented on on a, a, a range of architectural choices. Well, the way it would be implemented would be through compliance checklist of the landscape screening ordinance, the content of such plans. Um, the draft that's been prepared would um, require a landscape screening applicant to note if the development plan that they are proposing to landscape screen included approval of a certain subsection of the municipal code that implemented the allowable height addition, what is uh, referred to in the code as a architectural projection um, or vertical projection. So with that said, going a couple steps back, the why and the intention of that is, um, and Sally can probably speak to this since I, I think most of the um, concerns have been expressed directly to her, is that the landscapes, she wouldn't know um, under existing regulations whether or not a development site plan had such an architectural projection integrated into the main house. And she's doing landscape screening plan compliance and finding that the landscape screening plans at some points that have been approved aren't adequately screening this additional vertical aesthetic bulk and mass okay. because she wasn't aware that it's uh, integrated into the plan. All right, great. Uh, that makes sense. I just want to, I just think of all the elements that could be tricky to actually, you know, implement, uh, you know, uh, consistently, that might be the one that, that sticks out. So no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, and so the landscape screening agreement um, does require certification by the applicant and or property owner. So if they were to not note that um, the plans did not include an architectural projection, the plan gets approved. And then it's come to find out after the fact, yes, actually it did. Then they would be out of compliance with their agreement and would have to do the additional screening. 
All right. And is this, has any part of this gone, been gone over with the town council already uh, in, in study sessions or in other updates? Yes, the topic of um, adding additional screening for tower elements has been discussed. With the All right, I just want to make sure it's not going to be a surprise for them to, to have that on the radar screen. All right, that's uh, that's all I had. All right, so there is a there's an uh, action we could take if that's appropriate, uh, and I can make the motion if we want to take it. All right, I move that the Planning Commission find that the capital improvement program for fiscal uh, years uh, 2022. No, did I get the wrong one? I got the wrong one. Yeah, no, that's the right one. That's the right one. That, that's the, this one? Yeah, that's one. Thank you. I move the, that the uh, Planning Commission recommend the City Council adopt amendments to the Atherton Municipal Code AMC Chapter 1750 Landscaping Screening based on the findings and for the reasons outlined in the staff report. Thank you. I'll second that. Move and seconded. All right. Uh, no comments, so we'll go for a roll call. Chair Lane. Uh, yes. Commissioner Lerner. Yes. Commissioner Narnsek. Yes. And Commissioner Conte. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the back up. Mm -hmm. All right. Then, uh, then we'll go ahead with. Uh, the, uh, thank you for everyone who was uh, part of the uh, public hearing section, and then we'll go to the new business of general plan consistency determination of the capital improvement program for 2022-23. Uh, which is, you can tell I'm all ready for. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Chair. Um, so tonight you're being asked to make a determination if the town's current draft capital improvement program or CIP is consistent with the town's adopted general plan. So every fiscal year, uh, the town's Department of Public Works does provide updates to its existing CIP with a five-year outlook. A such draft CIP was prepared for this current fiscal year of, or upcoming, I should say, fiscal year of 2022-2023 through 2026-2027. Uh, funding sources for such programs are only identified for the current fiscal year or upcoming fiscal year um, in the most immediate. And um, <clears throat> such draft plan has been prepared. This draft plan was reviewed um, preliminarily by the city council at their May meeting. So state law does require a planning commission to review uh, jurisdictions CIP for a general plan consistency determination prior to any council taking formal adoption of such CIP, uh, which is uh, scheduled to occur next month in June by the council. So that is why this document is before the commission tonight and has been annually <coughs> before the commission typically in, in May of prior years. So the draft CIP um, is included as an attachment to the staff report. It does include targeted projects uh, to enhance accessibility, um, safety, and the built environment throughout town. It does um, further identify specific projects that target improvements to streets and transportation, to drainage in the Atherton Channel, uh, and to town-owned park, the park facilities and buildings. The projects and programs that are included in the draft CIP have been previously evaluated um, in other adopted town plans, such as the town's master drainage improvement plan and the Holbrook Park master plan um, and su subsequent reports. So as detailed in the staff report, it is found that all proposed identified projects and programs uh, in the current draft CIP are consistent with the noted goals, policies, and objectives of the adopted general plan. Uh, and as such is recommending that the commission find that the draft CIP is indeed consistent with the town's adopted general plan. All right, very good. Um, any questions of staff? No, no questions. Thank you. I, had a question. I had a question. Go ahead, Gabby. Um, oh, sure. I hope I'm not interrupting somebody. Um, so with respect to the drainage improvement, Atherton, I, I, know, I know I missed the last meeting. I, I'm sorry, I was unable to attend. But with, regarding the upper Atherton channel monitoring, this is addressing the frog habitat issue. Uh, is that any, is that relevant to um, the, the low water level? Because as I drive by quite often, I see a very low water level in the Atherton channel. It's the one near, near my home. Yeah, it very well could be. Um, uh, uh, the Department of Public Works identifies these projects based on their on-site inspections and other reports and evaluations. We can certainly follow up and see if there was any correlation between the red-legged frog habitat and uh, the noted low water level. I mean, I can speak just 
from prior experiences, a California red-legged frog is usually an identified potential species that has to be taken into account in any kind of waterway um, in, in this area. All right. So th there's a population of it and we're trying to protect it by um, maintaining that, that the channels. <clears throat> or there could be, or the channel could serve as potential habitat, even if there's no um, identified I think they'll use the term unit, which means frog. <clears throat> yeah. That's good to hear that we're protecting them to the best of our ability. Okay. Yeah, I've done, my, I've done my part to get the black, like atherton black squirrel off the danger list personally <laughs> in my backyard alone. All right. <laughs> that one's clear. Um, so, uh, it, it, a couple things uh, uh, on this. First of all, I want to open up the public hearing. Uh, section, which I neglected to do on the last item. So I'm going to uh, uh, open the, the floor for anyone who wants to talk about the landscape, landscape screening or the capital improvement programs right now. If there's anybody here. There was nobody online. There was nobody in the, in the audience. That's why I missed it. But I want to make it official that we are open for discussion on either and no one's coming forward. So I'm going to close, close the public hearing on both of those items and looking for uh, a, a either discussion or action on this item with the capital improvement program. I'm prepared to make a motion if there are no questions. All right, good, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I move that the planning commission find that the capital improvement program for fiscal years 2022, 2023 to 2026, 2027, and the projects included in that program are consistent with the Atherton general plan for the reasons noted in the staff report. Very good. Boy, that sounds amazing. We like the motion I almost made a minute ago. All right, uh, we have a motion and I'll second. Move and second it. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Lane? Yes. Commissioner Lerner? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Commissioner Narnsek? Yes. And Commissioner Conte? Gabby, you're up. Yeah. Gabby, we need your vote. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was just looking down. Yeah. All right. Good, then with that then, uh, thank you. We'll go on to item number six, and we have a rather dramatic staff report. I have two. All right, good. First, I'll start with the housing element. Oh, okay, that, that's less dramatic than I had in mind, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I think that's questionable. Um, so uh, as we know, we're in the process of um, creating a housing element in our current RENA cycle. Uh, we are revising a draft housing element for direction that was received uh, yesterday. There was a city council uh, special meeting. Uh, this, uh, the outcome of spe such special meeting uh, was direction to staff to include some additional properties for consideration in what is drafted as a proposed new multifamily overlay district. So additional properties were identified. Um, so staff will be working on updating uh, the housing element to include this additional direction um, and make some other enhancements to the document. Uh, the next step is to prepare a final draft updated housing element. We're targeting to have that done within the next two weeks or so. Um, following, you're not, not going to sleep for like two weeks though. Well, we've got a draft, so it's, we're just going to continue um, continue enhancing it. Um, and then the next step is for a 30 day uh, public comment period before a preliminary transmittal back to HDD or the Housing Community Development Department. Um, with that said, we would like to try to bring it back to the Planning Commission uh, during the 30 day public review comment period. Um, Typically, we would put this on a regular planning commission meeting agenda. However, um, we are already, we we're going to have a full meeting in June uh, with already submitted development items. So we're looking to potentially hold a special planning commission meeting just to uh, have the public comment for the housing element. So we will be following up uh, with all the commissioners uh, with a poll trying to um, identify a, a time and date that excuse me, I'll commit, or at least we can get a quorum of the commissioners and then we would duly public notice that, of course. Sometime in June? Sometime in June. So. Okay. July 3rd. Which is like 4th. next week. <laughs> July, Not July 4th. Morning no. of July 4th. Okay, July. <laughs> yeah, your calendar's open then. All right, good. And there was a second item. There is a second item. So we did want to make um, the community <laughs> and the commission aware that the um, company that currently serves the town's planning services, the company that both Ralph and I are employed by, Good City Good Company, time. has um, initiated conversations with the town manager and the town itself 
we will be um, slowly transitioning to no longer be providing such planning services to the town. Um, there likely will be some kind of RFP that the town would be putting out to uh, look to hire a new form, firm, but they'll have these discussions with the town council and the city manager. Um, there's no specific timing associated, but a uh, good city company is committed to staying and, and helping the transition um, for, for what it takes. How come I didn't know about this? Well, I, I, I found out when, from when I walked in earlier, I just, but, but with, we were just starting the meeting when you came in. So we all found out right now. I, I, I told him, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Well, we I know, know what the rationale behind that um, step is or? I, you know, Unusual. I, um, yeah, the owners of the owners of the company, um, there's, uh, feel like it's a, it's a transitionary time for, um, for the town and, and for the company's needs. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of work out there for planning for the next few years with all the changes and SB9 and other things. So, and uh, all these new plans coming forward. So it just could be a coverage issue too, you know, just in terms of the amount of work per square foot per town that you're supporting. So, uh, well, we and, and, and I want you to know it has nothing to do with the end of my term, I don't think. <laughs> Not. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to talk to George. Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, we can, we're talking about a lot of uh, uh, institutional knowledge walking out with you you all and, and, and great partnership and, and uh, so seamlessly so that probably for the first, uh, first uh, couple of years I was on the planning commission, I didn't even know that you weren't part of uh, part of the city. So, you know, it was, it's just been um, uh, the entire 10 years. I, I didn't find out till just now. <laughs> okay, no, we need to. Yeah, we'll yeah. Speak, we'll speak well, to, to that issue. Yeah, we, you know, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have the uh, manage jar in these meetings to, for collection for the, uh, for the contract or something. Yeah, this is not good news. No, uh, it's, it's not good I know, news I, at all. I'm new, I really enjoy working with you, Stephanie and, and Ralph. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, the other thing about it too is that going into the firestorm that the town's going to go into is really rough time for this to happen. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, okay. so uh, last meeting is my last meeting, uh, in, unless, uh, unless if, if nobody if nobody shows up, I told them that I go for another two years. But hopefully, after hearing that, somebody shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no. so, 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 uh, so. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really too bad. That doesn't make my night at all. But, uh, well, I think we have to make it really slow and, you know, long drawn out transition. <laughs> yeah, I don't anticipate anything within the next couple months ahead. All right. That sounds like famous last words to change, me. but all right, we'll see. All right. All right. Any, uh, the, the, any other staff reports? Actually, I'm cutting off staff reports at this point right now. I, ha I, have, no, I have no further updates. <laughs> and then uh, commissioner reports? No. I have nothing? No, not from me. All right. Gabby, anything you, you need to report? I think I just went, I wanted to apologize that I was not being able to call in my, I was, I was with respect to something with my husband's medical issues. So I wasn't able to call in. So I wanted to apologize that I was unable to attend last night. All time. right. Well, this, I hope it gets better. All right, with that, yeah. uh, item, uh, item eight, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, adjourn and, I, and I will second, third, and fourth that as my battery goes out on my iPad. Uh, so with, with that, we need a roll call. Chair Lane. Yes. Commissioner Lerner. Yes. Commissioner Narnsek. Yes. And Commissioner Conte. Yes. Thank you. All right, very good. We'll see you next uh, month. Thank you. Okay. All right, bye-bye. expect you to be on board.